So here's the thing about Eric, right? Remember what I went back to at the beginning and I talked about how you want to follow somebody that has believability, okay? So I think the special nature of Eric's story is look at the time frame, okay? Look at the time frame. So when, whenever, again, I mean, you know, when you look at all these stories, everybody's successful, right? They're going to do great. And whatever's happened so far doesn't mean that won't happen in the future. But the key is if someone's doing something in a time frame and it's better than what somebody else is doing in a time frame, how can we learn from that and what the differences are? And, you know, at the end of the day, like the, the success between each of these is, you know, their lives are pretty much the same in quality. Let's be honest, right? If you're making 70 grand a month, you're making 200 grand a month. It really don't even matter. I mean, at that point, like no one's crying for you, right? Oh, my life is hard. Like, no, you don't, right? I mean, okay, you got problems with things like we all do, but all of these people have great situations. But I think what's interesting about Eric's is the time frame. He also had a job. He put these other numbers here are related to, I think, the income he was getting from his job. Eric, are you on? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, Eric, how old are you? I'm 33. Okay, 33. And what services are you currently offering? Yeah, so I currently do tax planning. That's kind of our main service. And then tax preparation as well. So okay. pretty much focused on those two. And what happened when you first joined up with us? Uh, yeah, so it's kind of an interesting story. I mean, as you can see there, I was, I was working full time as a VP of finance for a home builder. And, you know, I was, I think I was making like just over a hundred grand like base and bonus and you know that was that was cool i thought like hey i made it i'm making six figures i'm, I'm making over a hundred thousand like this is this is awesome you know like what else what else do i need um and then um you know i i was working for this home builder they got acquired by a japanese public company and and i was working like insane hours and i remember talking to my wife and we're just like man like like I don't know how much longer we can do this. This is just crazy. And um, I remember Katie, um, Katie Hoagland from your office. She she reached out to me, and I had seen like your your Facebook messages and, and LinkedIn and all of that. And you know, I was so skeptical because that's you know I, I was an accountant, right? I'm skeptical <laughs> about everything. <laughs> so, um, and so. She talked to me, she caught me like while I was walking to work, it was like a 10 minute walk. And she was like, Hey, do you want to, you know, do you want to chat for a little bit? I was like, yeah, I have 10 minutes. And you know, at first when, when she said where she was from, I was like, Oh dang it. I thought I knew this number and I knew not to answer this, uh, this phone call. <laughs> and, uh, and so then, you know, she kept me on the phone for like a half hour um, she pitched me and I was like, there's no way I'm spending that much money on something. And so, you know, I told her, yeah, let's call, let's talk later. And, you know, I just kind of avoided it. That was like in October. And then I think December, um, you know, I just kind of had it with, with everything, with my, my job, it was like so stressful and I was just working crazy hours. And I thought, man, if I put this, how, how much time, were you making at the job here? Um, in December, I was making about uh, just over a hundred thousand. Okay. And, and then, when did you get to the first 20,000 a month? Was it by July? His, um, okay. his mic is kind of going in and out. Um, can you try to maybe do a, uh, like kind of either put it near you or just pull it out and use the computer mic? Yeah, I'll just use that. Yeah. It was a little scratchy, right? Yeah. Let's try that. Better? Can be better. I think better. so. Yeah. yeah. So, and did you hit your first 20,000 a month in July? Yeah, in July. Yep, that's when I did about twenty thousand. And what was the biggest thing that got you from leaving the job to here? Like, what was the thing that was like, oh, because you tried to start your business before as well, right? Oh yeah, I had a business on the side for about five years before I quit my job. <laughs> so, so since two thousand thirteen. Yeah, exactly. Wow, it's amazing, <laughs> right? So, like, we're looking at this time frame, but obviously, like, like, oh wow, eighteen months, blah blah blah. Well, eighteen months plus five years, right? So yeah, it's, yeah, like, right. it's one of those things, like <laughs> overnight success, a decade later, kind of thing, right? Yeah, um, exactly. Okay, so and but what was the biggest thing that was like, oh wow, I can, I can, like, how did you get to that first twenty? Um, I think for me, it was, you know, it it really started when I quit my job in March of twenty nineteen. And it was like, I had no choice because I wasn't, I had like zero recurring revenue. So that's when the income business. here went down. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Went, yeah. Yeah. And then it was like, I just had tax work. And so I really had no option, but I, ha I had to just 
really focus and do everything that you told me to do basically and you know get the marketing down and like I was crappy at sales I sucked at sales and I had to like listen to my calls like I I run every morning I would listen to my calls while I was running <laughs> in the morning and I it was painful to hear myself and I was just like oh man why am I doing that oh shut up stop talking uh you know and um but it was it was good it was so helpful to listen to my calls and and find out where I was I was messing up and and then you know I think you know I it spiked in July but that was a result of everything I was doing in March April and May and I was building up this pipeline and, you know, learning how to market and learning how to do sales. And then, you know, it kind of paid off in, in July and I, um, I closed some tax plans. And so that's kind of what happened there. And, you know, this is another one of those stories where like, look, he breaks down again, has a reduction in sales, boom, spike, reduction in sales, boom, spike. So what happened at these downturns? Like, let's look at this one in January 20. What mm -hmm. happened in, you know, January of this year before this? Like, yeah. Yeah, I, I remember exactly what happened. I was just exhausted. I remember I was I was so tired from from pushing all year, and I felt like okay, it's tax season, and I'm I'm exhausted, you know, and I'm just starting tax season, and so I I was like, I just need to like break. I just need a break, you know, and you know, mentally I just wasn't there, and you know, um, my sales went down, and was this spike COVID? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It, I mean, in February I hit, I think like 90 because of tax preparation. I was just preparing a ton of tax returns. So that was and before we like, knew about any of the COVID stuff. Yeah. Yeah. That was like pretty much all tax returns. And then, so you were having yeah. a record month before this and then it was just like, Oh, let's throw a COVID on the tax season. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so yeah. And then, yeah, that's, that spike was pretty much all COVID. I, you know, we, we were still doing tax prep and, and then COVID happened. And I mean, you know, I was just hearing all these stories in the group, like, Hey, I just sold another one, just sold another one. Just didn't. And I'm like, man, everybody's doing like crazy amount of sales. So I told my sales agent, I'm like, yeah, like, this is like a great opportunity. Let's, uh, let's just explode. I, I, you know, I opened my calendar again because she was really the only one taking calls at that point because I was just focusing on tax returns. And so I opened up my calendar. So the two of us, I mean, we had booked calendars every day for like the entire month of March and we were just taking calls and it was crazy. Love it. And um, I guess now at this point, like how big do you think the business can get? Like, what do you want to do biggest year between now and 70? Um, yeah, I, it's kind of crazy to think like, <laughs> like, oh, $10 million or, or whatever. And, you know, just, or, but I remember you, when I told you 50 and you were like, I don't know, I got to do 50. <laughs> yeah, and then, exactly. it well, let's, let's say on this point too. And I want you to finish that, but I just want to interrupt that. Cause I do remember saying that to you, but here's the cool part too. You did 90 here, but then you broke a hundred, but in the same month, you didn't just break a hundred, you broke 150 as well. Right. What did that teach you about how much more you could do in a certain time frame? Yeah, it was just kind of like literally unbelievable. I it was like surreal, right? Like, wow, I I can't believe I, that just happened. And like, well, I I'm capable of a lot more than I thought, and it helped a lot with my mindset. Um, and even now, like, you know, when I'm on a call or I'm talking to my sales agent or talking to employees, like, it's like, yeah, we can do this. Like, we've done it before, and it just helps my confidence a ton. And so what do you think biggest year between now and 70? Um, I would like, you know, 10 million. I think that would be, that would be cool. And I, you know, it seems crazy, but I think you've said one time, like we, we overestimate what we can do in a week and we underestimate what we can do in like 10 years. Right. You know, and totally. so I think, you know, yeah, I think it's definitely possible. Yeah. I think, well, you know, if, if you, if you're, it takes about the same amount of work, to get to a million as it does 10. Like, it's not like, like you still have the same number of days. It's really a lot of it's mental. Um, what's the number one problem in the business right now? Um, right now, I mean, a huge thing for me is, is hiring. I, right now I, I just, I don't have enough employees. And, and so I'm, I'm working a lot more hours than I would like to. And I, and I don't know, that's not like sustainable. 
Yeah, because you went from 50. I, yeah, I remember one time on the Q&A call in the middle of the month, he was like, I don't think there's a possibility of fulfilling on all of this given what's happening. And I was like, oh, shit. You know, and that makes sense because you were really staffed up for about 50000 a month. And then in a 60-day period, you had a month where you did more than triple that. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's crazy. That must have been super stressful just in the terms of volume of people, right, and tasks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I – I hired a, a couple people and I had an interview yesterday and I just offered another job to someone. Love it. Now, what do you think you'll do in terms of your salary and net profit this year? Yeah. So, so right now, you know, to, off of that point, like right now I'm like super profitable because I don't have a lot of, uh, of employees. So I think I'm like high seventies, but I think if I could be like 50, high 70%. Yeah. Uh -huh, and profitability. So My let's take that. Let's take the math on that, just so we can understand. Like, and again, you know, I mean, these are just the interesting moments that a human being experiences, right? Like, one hundred and sixty-one thousand times 0. 0.7. That's one hundred and twelve. Is that right? Something yeah. like that. That's insane, right? Where you just like, what the hell's going on? Yeah, yeah. My wife thought I was like selling drugs or something. <laughs> Um, honey, I saw Narcos, but this isn't sort of, okay, what is going, right? <laughs> She's like, you know, okay. And what has got you to stay in the group or, because I know you were in, I think, Next Level Firms before, right? And then you came over. Yeah, uh -huh. I, was, I started with Next Level Firms, yeah. And then what's I- What's the biggest thing you get out? What's the biggest thing you get out of the group? Um, yeah, so like, as you can see, like, you know, what I was doing before was just not working, right? Like, and I was doing that five years before that even, and like, I think the highest in sales I got was like 30. So I, I just can't, I feel like I can't afford to not be in this group because of like what I learned from other people in the group, what I learned from you and, you know, all of the coaches and everything. Um, like it, I just, I would be afraid, especially now, like I'd be afraid there'd be another COVID-19 and I would have no clue what to do, you know? And so and then my business would just tank. And I think, I feel like you're just kind of, you're on top of things. And it's like, I have a good place to go for resources. Love it. Mark, uh, so I'm going to do two questions. Mark says, what does your firm organization structure look like? Yeah. So um, yeah, that, that, and that's kind of like sad right now. Like what it is, is it's just me. And then I have, I literally have um, two part-time kind of like admins and then I have a, a sales agent and I have a contractor that does tax returns yeah and you would hire more people you just haven't it just been so fast yeah and yeah I'm bringing on um, hopefully in two weeks uh, a, like a, a tax manager how much uh, this one is from uh, alias how much of the 161 was tax tax prep COVID like if you were to break it down broadly yeah, no, that's a great point. So, so about probably about 60 of that, a little less than 60 was tax preparation. And then the rest of it was COVID. No tax planning that month, just dropped it. We just dropped tax planning. Nobody Love cared. It. So we just want COVID. Love it, man. Congratulations on everything. And